Got some pretty happy fish down in there, I think. It's nice to have a bit of extra room in the tank. And I'm happy to report that they're all looking pretty healthy at the moment. So that's a little bit of a bonus. They're, they're a little bit agitated because they haven't been fed yet this morning. Um, so, yeah, I've just been a bit busy. If I come down, I've got to get some black turmeric for a mate of mine who needs some. So I thought I'd um, come down and uh, feed these guys after I check their pH. Sorry if the sound's a bit dodgy today, folks, as well. Um, running without a microphone. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. pH is sitting around about 6.8. So these folks can have a feed. So, oh, by the way, good morning. I probably should have started the video off with that. But anyway, I'll get these jade perch some feed and uh, we'll have a bit of a gander at them feeding. So these fellas are getting a little bit toey. So we'll throw this in. It's, um, yeah, they've been yeah, really good since we harvested out those others the other week, by the way. Um, I'm yet to uh, actually cook any of that fish up because Bianca and I went away for a little while and we've been running around doing family bits and pieces and eating out the freezer before we get to the fish so hopefully you'll see some photos of some meals we created with the fish in coming weeks first one off the um, that will be a curry that we make up using some home-grown home grown, uh, bits and pieces like the ginger, gingers and gallangals and turmerics and kaffir and lemongrass and those sort of things that we love to grow. It's always nice to be able to um, grow your own Thai sauce or Thai style I should say. So we'll leave those fish at it and I thought I'd um, give you folks a bit of an update. I've shown bits and pieces to, there's a Jack, oh we don't need to see you doing that Jack. Um, a uh, bit of an update on the system. Grandma Chili, the Ahe Amarillo, has decided to call it quits. So the remaining chilies on there are going to be harvested for seeds. And I have been really slack, yes, since I've been away. I haven't pulled out any of these um, red Chinese amaranth I said I was going to. Maybe I should do that this afternoon. And um, they might be a little bit big now. They may not survive transplant too well, but I think there's a couple of small ones in there we might be able to get away with. Uh, the rest of the system's going well. The beans ended up being, I'm not too sure if I've mentioned this, but the beans ended up being um, climbers that I planted out. I showed that in a video a couple of weeks back. Um, so that they actually have to come out. There's no point in having climbers in here because I'm not going to set up something, a structure for them to climb on. Over here we have the lettuce that I showed, the um, stuff that I basically just shook in to the grow bed as I was harvesting the seeds. The anchor's taken a few bits and pieces out for herself and I think the rest will need to come out um, very soon or at least mowed back because we're only going to end up with bits and pieces going a little bit manky in the center where you don't get any airflow in there. Actually I might offer some to my mum when I pop around to her place this afternoon. Uh, the ball capsicums are going well. I'm actually going to trim off some of the older sections over the back there and just leave these new sections which have flowers on them and down in here we have an, the other one I was going to pull this one out but it started off with some awesome looking growth so we're going to leave that one in there as well some black turmeric over the back there doing mighty fine really pleased with that the mushroom herb and the sorrel so, uh, I think they don't like the high salt salt levels I have in the system at the moment so uh, they started to die back I may have mentioned that earlier as well and Bianca's uh, jalapeno in here, we thought had a calcium issue, but everything else seems to be doing well. So what I really need to do is get in there and have a look for um, pests, and because mites actually do the same sort of thing with the leaf curl. Um, so I really should have a look at that and not handle anything now I've touched that. So anyway, yeah, a little bit of an update on the system. Just nip around the other side again. I did mention the way that the salt's affecting the uh, sorrel over there. Uh, what I'm doing to reduce it, it was up to between four and five parts per thousand when I was treating the fish. When I empty the radial flow settler, I am dumping the whole amount of it out down the back onto plants. And um, yeah, pretty much I'll just through that little outlet there through a pipe work and out just pumping it down the back. And none of it's going into the mineralization tank at the moment because I don't want to elevate the um, chloride levels in there. So I'll test it after the next clean and we should hopefully be down 
at least down to between two and three parts per thousand. So yeah, I, I don't think we're going to have any issues with saving the sorrel. It's just looking uh, pretty runny at the moment. Those big amaranth were removed out of there and yes, I need to trim back the basil yet again. And no, I haven't done the pesto video. Well, I filmed it, but I haven't edited it and put it together. So um, yeah, I might look at doing that later this week as well. I'm working on a uh, video for this weekend. Uh, just look at growing at looking at growing gingers in containers from um, planting out to harvest um, using some older footage as was suggested by the YouTube folks when I did a course recently how are you guys you're all nice and mellow now you got full bellies so there we go folks uh, just quickly a uh, huge shout out to everyone who um, left comments on the last video uh, just a quick reminder what I'm doing isn't um, dual root zone as some of the growers like potent ponics do it so if you want to learn more about the um, dual root zone, how it's done with two separate layers that are treated differently, do head over to Steve's channel and I'll pop a link up here at the end that you can go suss out that explains it better. It's a presentation he did to the Chinese Aquaponics um, Association from memory. Um, so do suss that out to get a better understanding how um, it's done um, more technically than we do it here in the backyard where it's open to the elements and rain and that sort of thing. Um, also to huge thank you to you folks who are supporting the channel by buying our guide and joining the membership um, different platforms thank you very much uh, there was a new module added to the guide last week and there's going to be a new one again about um, fish feeding rates and that sort of thing um, so that will be coming to the guide probably next week at this point because uh, I'm a bit busy doing the ginger video and other bits and pieces. Uh, but yeah, I thought I will pretty much will leave it there. Uh, thank you if you've uh, made it to the end of the video. I always do love chatting to you guys down in the comments. And I thought, you know, it's about time we have a bit of a, just a quick aquaponics update. Just looking at how the growth is going. Now we're coming into the last week or so of summer here in South East Queensland, Australia. I'm going to stop yabbering on, get this turmeric for Alan, and I will catch you all later. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.